Well, I think that November is kind of the time of the year when you really need to play your best football. Uh, if you're going to accomplish the goals that you have, it's great that you put yourself in a position uh, to be able to accomplish the things that you can accomplish. But uh, I think that November is the month where you've got to be at your best and be your best as a football player. And I think everybody's got to be working hard to do their job um, and maintain focus, practice, preparation, uh, as well as when the game comes, be ready to go for 60 minutes. I think one of the things that get very difficult for players at this time of the year because of the grind of the season is nobody really feels all that great. I don't think that's unusual. That probably would be what every team would say right now. Uh, but the people who recover properly, rest properly, get the right sleep, eat right, uh, have a lot of positive energy and confidence about how they do what they do and what they need to do to be able to do it well. Uh, and I think everybody's got to sort of accomplish the, am I going to do what I feel like doing, or am I going to choose to do the things I need to do to accomplish the goals that I have? And I'm sure you've all heard of the obstacle is the way. Well, there's a lot of obstacles out there that are created by the other teams that we have to play. Uh, so we can't be the obstacle ourselves by not being positive in terms of what we have to do to prepare, overcome adversity, get new players to play, whatever it is. Uh, we have to be very positive about you know, doing that. Starkville is a really tough place to play. Uh, every game that we played there has been a really hard, physical, hard-fought game. Uh, they've got a great atmosphere. Uh, they have great spirit. So it's going to be a very challenging game for us. Um, we've got to be able to handle and manage this, and the better the preparation, excuse me, the better opportunity we'll have to do that. Okay, we'll start on the right side with Chandler. How did Minka look this week in practice, and do you think he's as close to full health as he can be? Well, I'm not a doctor, right? and one of the most difficult things to do as a coach is to coach injured players because you ask me if I think he's close to full health. I mean, Again, you know, did you ever see that series on TV called The Good Doctor where that guy's really, really smart and he figures out things and nobody else can figure out, but he's, you know, I, I'm, I'm not there. I'm not there. <laughs> I, if I was, I'd be working in that hospital probably. I, but um, he's done well in practice. Uh, he's worked. He's got his reps. Uh, so he's going to be prepared to play in the game. And, you know, we'll, we'll make a decision based on whether he thinks he can do his job uh, when the time comes. Come back over here with Michael. Uh, I want to ask about your uh, working relationship with Greg Byrne. What's it been like, and what's he like as an athletic director? Oh, I like Greg, you know, a lot. Um, very easy to work with, uh, easy going, uh, very well organized, very supportive. Um, I think he's trying to do things that he can to promote a lot of positives throughout the athletic department, the organization, the university. Um, our fan base and uh, constituency of people who, you know, support the program, cultivating a, a new generation of supporters for Alabama football, Alabama athletics, and um, so I think he's done a great job so far, and I'm very pleased, and I've been pleased with everybody that we've had. I love Mile, I love Bill, uh, and I love Greg, so I haven't had any problems, and they've always been, they've all been really good to me, uh, and we appreciate it. Up front here with Mark. Uh, is, is there an update on Nigel Knott's status? We saw him on uh, crutches. And he's out. Come back over on this side with Tony. What's the biggest improvement you've seen in Raekwon's pass rush abilities? Well, I think Raekwon um, has just developed more confidence in when he's out there. I think uncertainty in players always creates a little apprehension and playing fast, uh, getting off the ball quickly. So the more experience guys get, the more repetitions they get. I think the more confidence they get. And when he plays fast, he's a very effective player. And uh, I've seen a big difference in uh, the confidence that he has in pass rush, as well as the confidence he has in doing his job. So uh, I think he's played better and better throughout the season uh, in all aspects, aspects of, of, of the game. Back up with Reiner. Um, last two four quarter games you guys have played uh, against AM and LSU, you guys used 19 players on offense. Uh, is there 
uh, point of diminishing returns uh, based on personnel and how many guys you use, or I mean, do you, and how do you factor in all the different things in determining who you want to play in those in that situation? Well, let me be clear here. Does the fact that we play 19 players is that a good thing or not a good thing? I, I, I don't really know. I didn't know that. I mean. So because we won those two games, does that mean we should just play 19 players in this game? Or is there some... Look, we have a meeting every week before the week starts, whether it's based on injuries, whether it's based on depth situations, whether it's based on performance, um, maybe an issue that players having, whatever it might be. These are the guys that want to coach and get ready to play in this game. And we know exactly who we're going to play at right tackle, left tackle, left guard, right guard, center. Um, we know that in skill positions, how we're going to alternate guys so that we keep guys fresh and play more guys at those positions. And that's what we've done. So I don't keep a, like a head count of how many guys actually end up getting to play. So some positions you don't like to rotate a lot. The offensive line, maybe being one, we rotate tight ends. We were rotating the tight ends more before Miller got hurt. So I, I don't know if there's a formula for it or it's good or bad. I, I usually think the more players that you play, uh, the more depth you have on your team, probably the better team you're going to have. I think you all heard me say that I old coach, Coach James. Um, who I absolutely love and probably is responsible for me being in this profession at all, um, used to always say, if you look at the bottom 40 guys on your roster and determine how good they are, then that will probably tell you what kind of team you're going to have. So, and I know you're just looking at the top 19, but. Finish up here with Alex, last question. I saw Tony, a lot, Tony Brown a lot more, obviously, with, with Nick here kind of limited this past game. What have you seen his development this, this even the last two years since he's been playing kind of with Nick and behind him? And, and what do you kind of expect from him going forward? Well, when Tony can stay focused on what he's supposed to do, do the right things, make good choices and decisions about what he does and stay focused on it, he can be a very effective player. So consistency and performance for him comes from that, and that's what we always work to try to get with him. And, uh, that's what we'll continue to do, and he's probably going to get more opportunities in the future to play, and um, I'm hopeful that, you know, we're going to spend every bit of time that we can with him to try to get him to do the things the way he needs to do them so he can be successful. I think he wants to be successful. We just got to help him do it. Okay, Coach, that's all we got. Thank all you. Right, thank you.